Welcome everyone. As you're signing on, we will start in just a couple of minutes. We are honored, lucky to have uh, Mr. Jim Silbernagel on the call today. The cool thing about Jim is many of you know him obviously from Power Session Live. I doubt there's many people here that don't know about Jim from Power Session Live and the other NAFI events that he's done. But uh, the big thing about Jim is that he actually does this stuff in the real world for people right now. He's not an academic. He just doesn't talk about it uh, and uh, talk theory. He, he's, he's working with clients every day. Um, and every week he's got uh, real world scenarios. And so there's so many times that you hear from academics and not that academics aren't needed and aren't smart to know what's going on. Uh, but the issue is, is that sometimes they are not as familiar with the real world. And many of you are in the real world and working with uh, people. And it's like, well, that sounds interesting, but how does that really work uh, with the clients? And with everything that's going on with inflation, massive government spending, uh, all of the other uh, you know, dramatic changes, there's so many changes, it's hard to keep up with it all. Uh, the last two years, it's like uh, we're in a different world than we were two years ago in, in a lot of ways. Um, and so one of the things that we wanted to spend this hour talking about, uh, which is super important, is Roth conversions. Um, and that's really uh, one of the things that, that uh, uh, most of the advisors that I've been talking about in regard to uh, uh, dealing with um, uh, planning, there's very few advisors that aren't pretty interested in the uh, Roth conversion. The problem is, is that nobody really enjoys pay, playing ta uh, paying taxes. So um, we'll get rolling. Uh, there's a few more of you hopping on and uh, appreciate seeing all of you on this Friday afternoon. Um, but let's talk a little bit about uh, where Roth conversions are going. I'm a farm kid. I grew up on a farm in Wisconsin. Um, and David McKnight's comment has always resonated with me. You wanna pay tax on the seed and not the harvest. And we know that the harvest, you pay a, a lot more than what you pay if you paid it on the seed. So that's kind of comes down to as you're heading into retirement, uh, or close to retirement, the Roth conversion is a huge factor. It's a big deal. So uh, what I want to do before we jump right into it, a lot of you are not familiar with what Fairway does as far as Fairway Forever. Many of you have been to NAFA events that I've been at or Jim has been at, and you've seen this slide before, but I just want to give a quick review as it relates to Roth conversions. Everybody uh, who owns a home has three buckets of wealth. Bucket one is your ability to make money. That's the client's bucket, monthly income. Bucket two is the nest egg. Uh, and that's the money that you folks manage uh, from a financial planning perspective. People try to put away five, 10, 15, 20%, whatever average savings rates are below five. Uh, mm -hmm. But they give you money for 401ks and IRAs, and stocks, bonds, life insurance, annuities, whatever. And then they also send us a whole boatload of money, hundreds of thousands of dollars. Um, and that's in the form of what we call, of course, home equity. Um, so you're paying off a house, you're putting uh, uh, a tons of money into the house. Uh, I was just talking to our uh, host uh, before he came on and looking at buying land and building a house, you're investing hundreds of thousands of dollars over your uh, working career in bucket three. Now, when you get to the bottom rectangle, your bottom retirement wallet, and your income goes down or maybe goes away, except for social security because you're retired, um, then you turn to bucket two and you start drawing money out of your IRAs and 401ks and you start paying taxes. Wealthy people pay a lot of taxes. They don't go into a lower tax bracket in retirement. You folks obviously know that. Um, however, what most people don't understand is that you can pull money out of bucket three. There's two different ways to pull money out of bucket three. Uh, and that is to sell your house. Well, if you sell your house, uh, obviously you don't have a place to live and you gotta go find another place to live and most people don't wanna live with their kids. And so most of the time you wanna stay in your house or you wanna buy a house where you're going to be for the fourth quarter of your life. So what we're gonna talk about specifically today is there's two types of people that you're dealing with in retirement. There's people that have a mortgage yet when they hit their 60s. That's 56% of the population and what we'll be talking about quite a bit today 
Um, and then there's 44% of the population that are still making a mortgage payment. In fact, there's over 30% of the people that are still making a mortgage payment into their 70s and 80s. So uh, the issue is, is that we have a whole bunch of information about why you should not continue to make a mortgage payment. Once you hit 62, if you have 50% equity or better, you don't have to make a mortgage payment anymore. But that's not the subject of today's uh, program. Today's program is talking about the 56% of the people that have their house paid off or mostly paid off that can pull that money out tax-free when they reach 62 uh, and use that money to pay taxes instead of using bucket two money to pay taxes. It's very simple. Uh, really not all that complicated, but very few people do it because they don't understand that that money is liquid cash, can be turned into liquid cash with using a reverse mortgage. So I've used a forward mortgage to pay off my house, uh, putting in hundreds of thousands of dollars over the years. A reverse mortgage simply reverses that process and pulls equity back out. Pretty simple. Now, how much money can I pull out? About half the value of my house, depending upon how old I am. Uh, that varies. We're not going to go into a lot of mechanics on that. We can refer you to some other webinars to talk specifically about that. But uh, I put a whole bunch of money in, and now I can pull it out. And a reverse mortgage allows me to take out about half the value of my house. So I've got a $600,000 house. I can pull out about $300,000. you got an $800,000 house. You can pull out $400,000 uh, and so on. So that's money that is available to me as cash that I do not have to pay back uh, until a year after I'm dead or when I permanently move out of the house, whichever comes first. Now, when you think about the time value of money, if I can borrow money at somewhere between three, four percent and never pay it back until a year after I'm dead with the, what's going on with inflation and everything, why would everybody not do that? I'm 62 in April and I'm doing it. Uh, I wouldn't think about going one day past the, what I can do this because it just makes a tremendous amount of sense. That is money that most people do not realize is available to them sitting in bucket three that they can pull out to pay a Roth conversion. Now, real quickly, if you take a look at, um, whoops, uh, there's the, if you take a look real quick at uh, some numbers here that I just threw together, uh, of course, Jim has a lot more detailed numbers that make more sense, but just think about it. If I've got a million dollar traditional IRA and I turn it into a Roth in 20 years, what is my Roth IRA worth? Well, it's going to double twice at 7.2% and it's going to be $4 million. Um, and I've got a bird that's making a lot of noise. I'm going to close that. Um, there we go. Um, so I would have, I will have $4 million, okay? Because it doubles to 2 million in 10 years and then 20 years, it's worth $4 million. If taxes are paid, from somewhere else uh, at a Roth conversion. Well, what if I use 300,000 to pay my taxes and I only have a $700,000 Roth IRA? I only end up with 2.8 million, the difference of 1.2. Of course, I'm not figuring the money being taken out of uh, the account, just figuring the absolute dollars. So if taxes are paid by the IRA, I'm gonna lose 1.2 million. But if you use that money, even if interest rates go up, uh, if I've got an increase in my portfolio of 1.2 million, well, I lose home equity. I got a decrease in home equity because I did a reverse mortgage. What does the $300,000 in taxes turn into? $740,000. My net gain is almost a half a million dollars because obviously the increase in the value of the portfolio is going to be worth more. So that's very basic numbers, but you understand how that makes sense is why would I not use tax-free money out of my house to make the mortgage payment instead of using money that obviously has the potential to grow because of course in the Roth, not only do I not get paid on the increase um, or not only do I not have to pay taxes ever on what I take out, I never have to pay taxes on the increase. So it just makes a tremendous amount of sense from that standpoint in just basic numbers, uh, which is pretty obvious. So uh, let's uh, kind of go back to Jim, who, as I said earlier in the conversation, um, Jim uh, works with people every day. So he's, he's done a tremendous amount of research, speaking all over the country, especially with NAFA, uh, through Real Wealth and so on, and works with a lot of academics. But he also does real world stuff, and he's got a case study that he actually got. And, um, uh, and yes, any of you can have a copy of the slides as well. Uh, we'll give you some contact uh, information. Uh, and real quickly, David said, well, just a minute, who foots the bill for the house after you're dead? the house does. 
Did my house go up in value? Did my house go up in value over 600,000? Probably, probably went to one, two million dollars, who knows, with inflation and the massive increase in housing values. But what if it goes down? It's an FHA loan and it's non-recourse and the difference is forgiven. So if my house is worth more, the difference goes to my kids. If the house is worth less than $740,000, the difference is forgiven and nothing has to be paid. So the, the house is responsible for the loan, not you, not your kids, not your state. Uh, it is uh, owed by uh, the house. So um, uh, just kind of a, uh, a quick uh, information. And yes, John, reverse mortgage proceeds are tax-free because it's borrowed money. It's not a special exclusion. Um, it's simply when you borrow money, it's tax-free. Um, and and Janine, if you want to leave you know, the family home to your kids, which only about one to two percent of kids want your house, uh, life insurance is a tremendous way to pass that on because are all your kids going to move in? I hear that from everybody. Well, I want to give my house to my kids. How many kids really want uh, the parents' house? Very, very few. But if they do, it's cheaper to buy life insurance to give the kids an inheritance to be able to pay off the loan than it is to send that money there accordingly. So um, uh, I will turn things over to Jim because he's got some excellent slides and some case studies, and I'll kind of keep an eye as well on, on the questions. And uh, Cheryl, there's fixed rate loans and there are adjustable rates, either or depending upon what you want. And uh, that uh, allows you to pull out approximately the same amount either way. So if I got a $600,000 house, I'm gonna be able to draw out about 300. Uh, and by the way, we also have jumbo loans um, and uh, we're doing one right now for a client, $12 million in a 401k rollover physician, $8 million house. He's doing millions of dollars in Roth conversions. This is not just for, um, this is for wealthy people as well as average people and poor people in between. So uh, don't pigeonhole a reverse mortgage as something that's just kind of a loan of last resort. Uh, Jim, I got to quit talking because you've got some awesome stuff to go over here. All right. Well, thanks, Harlan. And first of all, first thing I want to say is Harlan is a true partner of NAFA. And he's got what you got about 200, 250 uh, of your loan people that have joined NAFA so far. Yes. And we're looking to get that number up. We want to be the largest members of NAFA that are non financial advisors in the history of NAFA. And I think you're probably close to that already, if not over. For that, I just want to thank you for supporting the group. And, and I will just say, um, I've first of all, you all might have compliance issues. And so you got to be careful of that. I, I had one guy got a threatening letter from their compliance department. Um, but with that said, you know, it, you know, the compliance departments are coming around. And I know Harlan's done a real good job. I've helped a few advisors get through to their compliance people. I recently switched BDs and I got them to change their attitude about it. So it's something that you want to uh, make sure um, that you're able to do it. Um, and once you are able to do it, let's face it, uh, FINRA changed their stance in 2014 on this and says it's a valuable tool in the toolbox. And as I speak around the country, many advisors are still living in the past. They might've heard some bad stories in the past um, you know, and there were, before it was government regulated, it was the wild, wild west, and there were people that got taken advantage of, just like people have been taken advantage of with life insurance and annuities. That doesn't make them bad products, it's just some bad actors. So now the whole thing is regulated, and the one thing I would say, I mean, I'm going to get into something here, but it's a, it's the Swiss army knife of financial planning. Um, there's so many different ways it can be used. And don't get caught into tunnel vision where you're just thinking of it as one thing. I, I just look at some of the questions. What if I want to leave the house to the kids? You got to look at this as just another asset in the bucket and where are we going to pull money from? Um, and what makes the most sense? Because what I find, if people are going to live to life expectancy, if I do a uh, reverse mortgage as part of my overall planning strategy, however I'm going to fit it in, to that strategy, whether it's to pay off an existing mortgage, and now I don't have that cash outflow, so I don't need to replace as much income, or if I'm using it as an equity out or something that I'm reserving money for, um, there's a lot of different ways it can be tailored to be used. And I could literally spend three hours taking a deep dive on all these different things, 
And what Harlan asked me to focus in is a Roth conversion. And unfortunately, you're going to get more benefits than just the Roth conversion when you do this. Mm -hmm. And you'll see that as I go through it. So have an open mind on this stuff, um, you know, and look at the possibilities. Don't look at it in a vacuum. Because one thing I look at with the reverse mortgage, you know, they limit you to roughly 50%, give or take, depending on your ages, to what you can have in equity. And if all we do is look at the statistical averages, if you look at most parts of the country, if we go back over the last 100 years, housing prices have appreciated at somewhere between 3 and 4%, okay? So if I've got a $200,000 house and it grows by 3%, that's a $6,000 plus on my equity side. If I've got a reverse mortgage and it's 4%, but it's on $100,000, I got a 4% debit on the equity side. If we just have normal markets over time, if we look at historical numbers, it's not that we're taking away equity. The equity should still grow, just not as fast, but we still own and control the house. I still hear people say, I mean, I, I had a guy, he's in our business and he's a sharp guy, does financial planning. And he told me he was refinancing his house and he's old enough that he could do a reverse mortgage. And, he, and I said, why aren't you doing a reverse mortgage? And he said, because I want control of my house. And I said, you still control your house. As a matter of fact, you control it more than if you do a forward mortgage. And the reason you control it more is because it's a non-recourse loan. You don't have to make payments. You can, if you want, you can mix and match payments. You've got all the flexibility in the world. It's just a much more flexible option of financing your house. And it's the perfect option for someone in retirement. So I'm gonna get into show how we look at re, um, reverse mortgage and build that in to a retirement plan that includes getting them to, as David McKnight talks about, the zero tax, um, getting them to the zero tax rate, the power of zero. So any rate, first, first thing I want to say is pay taxes while they're on sale. Now, I think if you would have asked anybody last year if they were going to have a bet whether or not taxes would go up, go down, or stay the same, I think most people would want to bet that tax rates were going up. It looked like it was a foregone conclusion. Well, you all know the story now. They've done nothing. They can't get everything together. They can't figure it out. So the tax rates haven't gone up. And I think, you know, depending on what happens in the election, I think it's going to be very hard to get tax rate increases in the future. Now, if we don't have any tax law changes, we still do because we have a temporary tax law that ends after 2025 and we go back to these rates later. Now, I don't have the whole tax tables on here. I just have the sweet spot where just about every single one of our retirement clients are in unless they were a business owner or extremely high paid professional because this these top brackets for a married couple and I, I got to admit, I didn't get this through compliance for this year's tax rates yet, but it is um, last year's tax rates. But really, for a married couple up to $329,850, I would be willing to bet that if we took a survey of everybody that's on this call, there probably is less than 100 clients of all the people on this call where they have household income over 329. So most of those people are under those rates. So think about this, okay? You've got tax brackets. You got the initial tax bracket, which is your deductions. Uh, if you're itemizing or your standard deduction, if you don't have enough itemized deduction, and most people in middle-class America, the people that we serve are, uh, most of them cannot itemize under the current rules. Um, then we have a 10% bracket. Now, I, I get amazed how many people, if you ask your clients, what is your, what tax bracket are you in? I get numbers all over the board. They don't understand it. Um, and they don't understand how the rates work because I had a client where about eight times I had to tell him, this guy was a professional making 300 grand a year. He kept thinking, I'm in a 25% bracket and with state or whatever, 30%, I'm gonna have to pay 30% of all my income. And he just didn't get, he didn't think that we, in our income plan, planned for enough revenue to come in so that he could pay the tax and had enough left over. I had to go through the math with them five, six times to show them we're right down to the penny what your taxes are going to be. And they're not going to be a penny more than this. So at any rate, so you go through that staircase. 
So now if we look at what the rates are going to go back to, you get to this 15% bracket where we're now in a, in a 12% bracket. So that means tax rates for people in the 12% bracket are going to go up 20% um, here in just a couple of years. Um, actually, 25% it's going to go up. We're saving 20% now, but it's going to go up 25%. Then you look at 25%. Now, how many people on the call know at what amount of taxable income in 2026 will single taxpayer be in the 25% bracket? If you don't know that answer, you shouldn't be in retirement planning. But here's the deal. 37, 000, I believe it's $37,900 is where that bracket, and it goes back to those brackets right now, the way the law is written. So how many people do you know can live on $37,900? Okay, because keep in mind, when you're a single taxpayer, you're going to end up, um, you're, you're going to end up paying um, more in taxes, your brackets, because the brackets get, you know, when, when one person dies, those brackets get cut in half. So you reach those brackets sooner, more of your social security might be taxable, and you're losing a social security check, and you might lose a pension check. So if those things are happening, the income goes down, and the taxes might be going up. And then you look at the next bracket is 24%. Now, the reason I show that bracket is 24 is less than 25. So one of the things we have to do with people is determine what bracket they will be at in the future. You know, because the big fallacy with accountants out there and everybody else is when you retire, you're going to be in a lower bracket. Well, not necessarily. Only if you didn't successfully save will you be in a lower bracket. You might very well be in a higher bracket. So the thing is, you know, as Harlan talked about, it's not a matter of if we're going to pay taxes, it's when and how much. And nobody wants to pay taxes today. They want to kick the can down the road, kick the can down the road. And one of the analogies I heard is the best one I've ever heard was by uh, Don, is it Don Blanchard? Don Blanton. Or Don Blanton. And he's the one that helped make the software here that uh, Harlem was talking about earlier. Um, but uh, the money tracks. At any rate, he said, if you were to go into, uh, wanted to buy a house and you go into a mortgage uh, banker, broker, whatever, go into the bank and you say, hey, I'm looking for a house. I want a $300,000 house. Will you give me the loan? And they pre-qualify. You say, no problem. As a matter of fact, we'll qualify you up to 500,000. Feel free to write an offer. We'll give you the loan. So you go out and you make the offer. You come back to the bank. Hey, we found the house. We stuck within our budget. We're at 300,000. We need the loan. And he goes, and the banker says, okay, no problem. And you say, well, wait a minute, what are the terms of the loan? And he says, you know what? The bank is so flush with money right now. We don't need any money right now. Tell you what, you just go ahead, buy the house. If we need money, we'll let you know at that time how quickly we need you to pay you back and what your interest rate would be. How many people would take that loan? Okay, I know I wouldn't, all right? But isn't that what an IRA is? When you put the money in the 401k, the government says, we'll let you deduct this much. They do not give you a, a statement saying, when you take the money out, we will only charge you this rate and you'll be able to take it out over this period of time. Now we do have the RMDs and we know we've had a change as far as delaying the RMD now from 70 and a half to 72, but it didn't change those percentages. So it just let that money grow a little bit longer. So those RMDs become a lot bigger, which triggers things like IRMA and taxes on social security. So you need to be aware of these things and you need to be a student of how these rates work because it's more than just getting the taxes paid. Because if you did some, some things, you know, it, it might be counterintuitive where it seems like it doesn't make sense to do a lump sum because now we're getting in higher brackets. Um, sometimes spreading it out in lower brackets, we might be in a lower bracket, but we might have extra taxes on social security. We might trigger um, IRMA or whatever over a longer period of time. So the one thing I don't have time to get into, but that you should be looking at is don't shoot from the hip on this stuff. Work with their CPAs or have a CPA that you can work with or have the software to do the calculations because you can figure out the best way to get those conversions done. Another caveat I would have is we had a lot of fear that Roth IRAs might go away. I don't know how many of you are aware of all the rule changes that were being proposed, but kind of we call it kind of the uh, backdoor IRA where uh, Roth IRA, where you got people that make too much money to contribute to a Roth, 
So they do, a, and, and they can't deduct a traditional IRA. So they do a non-deductible IRA and they turn around and do a conversion. That was on the chopping block. That was supposed to be gone. Any of our clients, if they made over $400,000 a year, no more Roth conversions. Um, and then you look at, they changed the distributions for non-spousal IRAs from lifetime to 10 years. So the handwriting's on the wall. These opportunities may not be around that long. I've had a lot of clients on the plan to get everything converted in a way that makes sense between now and 2026. Last year with the threat of these new rule changes, I actually had a lot of people, including myself, where we did more conversions this year uh, or this past year than I was really bargaining for. But they're still alive and well. Take advantage of it while we can. And right now, tax rates are on sale. And if you ask any client you know what they think is going to happen with future tax rates, they all believe that rates are going up. Well, they don't have to just believe it. Right now, it's in the law that they will go up. So there's no question about it. They will be going up, even if Congress does nothing. Now, the next slide, I just show about RMDs, you know, and this is the table for RMDs. How much is the percentage you have to take out? Now, of course, at 70 and at 70, 71, we don't have RMDs anymore, but you still can do charitable contributions tax-free. That's still at 70 and a half. So um, keep in mind that that's still a benefit that you can have, but look at it. Let's say you're 85 years old, okay? And you got a million dollars in your IRA, that's 67,000 that you're forced to take out with no, um, there, there, there's no question about it. You just have to take it out. Well, guess what? If you got 67 grand coming out of your IRAs, you're paying maximum taxes on social security. If you're a single taxpayer, you're probably facing Irma right now. And if you ask anybody in retirement planning, a million dollars today isn't necessarily a safe amount of money to be retiring on. So, um, so there's real compelling reasons to be looking at conversions. So what I'm going to do is go through a little case study here uh, that we did and, and just kind of talk about what happens and then how we tie in um, the, the uh, reverse mortgages into the whole equation. And Harlan talked about and, and you can't underestimate the value of this. When we pull money out of a, uh, a reverse mortgage, the tax rate is zero, okay? Now, one other side note on this. When you're paying a forward mortgage, a traditional mortgage, so many dollars a month, how much do you have to make to pay a $1,000 mortgage payment? You know, for a lot of folks, if they got, if they're in a state that has state income tax, you got federal tax, you're paying FICA on your money. A lot of people have to earn $1,300 or more for every thousand dollar mortgage payment. So you're always paying with after tax dollars. And I have people go, oh yeah, but I can deduct the interest rate. Well, if you just assume that it's deductible, it is true, it's deductible, but do you get a benefit? You only get a benefit if you itemize. And like we said in the beginning here, most people can't even itemize. Okay, now change that to a reverse mortgage. How much money do I have to take out of my retirement account, which is taxable right now, because if we're talking about traditional IRAs, how much money do I have to take out taxable to make my reverse mortgage payment? None, because I don't have to take any out. Okay, and here's the beauty of the reverse mortgage. When it comes time to pay off the mortgage, you're paying from proceeds of your house. Okay, now right now, according to tax laws, when someone dies, we get a full step up in basis. So what is the cost of taxes on the proceeds of the house that we're using to pay off the mortgage? It is zero. We've never paid taxes on that money. We're using pre-tax dollars to pay off that mortgage instead of tying up after-tax dollars. That is a huge point. Now, if we're selling the house before we die, you know, we've got up to a half a million dollars that's tax free. So there's still in my area, just about every client that I work with that I'm you, I'm working with middle class America, just about every single client is going to have their entire reverse mortgage paid for with pre tax dollars, whether they leave the house before they die or after they die, unless there's a change in tax law. And I don't do planning based on a might change it to this. I'm taking advantage and putting my clients in the best position for the way taxes are today. And Harlan will even share with you, if we go back to the old tax laws, not only can we pay it with pre-tax dollars, but all that interest is deductible 
And if we can do unlimited deductions with mortgage interest, which right now we can't, but if we go back to the old tax rules, we might be able to, we might be able to pass on a nice income tax deduction for our kids um, or even for ourselves, but that, that's getting, getting into the weeds a little bit, maybe too much. So any rate, so here's an example that I'm using. We got a husband and wife, 62 years old, million dollars in a traditional IRA. And I'm just gonna keep this simple, no outside investments. The only income they got is social security. And you probably have a lot of people just like this. Now I'm using kind of, I mean, I just had a client in just before I stepped into this meeting and their income needs were three grand a month. So that might seem low, especially if you live in California, um, you know, you probably can't even get through a month on that amount of income. But here in Wisconsin, uh, I've got a lot of people living pretty frugally. Um, but I'm just using this as an example, because if someone is living very frugal, we can get them into some really low tax brackets, even though they kick the can down the road and now have a million dollars that has a tax lien on it. So any rate, strategy steps. Okay, have wife draw Social Security because they're both 62. They're ready to retire. Her Social Security benefit, let's say it's 900 a month. She raised the kids. She wasn't working full time. She's got a smaller check. And, and, and then we would delay the Social Security on the husband. So we're, and when we did the calculations, we figured that we would convert $92,000 a year for eight years. Total converted was 736,000. Federal tax on the conversion was 88.80 a year. Okay, because what we did is we wanted to keep them in the 12% bracket and optimize how much of their social security might be taxable by doing that. And now because we had the husband delaying his social security, the penalty tax on social security is only on that $900 a month. So the total tax was 71,040. Now, one thing that amazes me, QLACs have been around as long as, as uh, FINRA has been saying reverse mortgages are okay. QLACs also came out in 2014. And what a QLAC is, is a qualified longevity annuity contract. It's a deferred immediate annuity, okay? Um, I know I've done some talks around. I'm still surprised that people in our business don't know what a QLAC is. And I'm also equally surprised that most people have never done one. Um, now, I will say right now, the way the pricing is, um, I have not done any QLACs recently, um, but there still is a fit for them. Right now, the guaranteed withdrawals that are available on, on regular contracts are, are almost as good as what a QLAC payout is, but I still see a place for them because if we don't want to have to take money out at 72, let's say we don't need it, I like using the K QLACs as a guaranteed inflation hedge. And I will just tell you from my experience, you can have around $1,000 a month, give or take, if there's no other uh, income coming in, that you can draw tax-free in retirement if it's just your Social Security. Okay, so you got to play with that. So we don't have to convert everything to get the money out tax-free. Okay, so just something to keep in mind. And then, so what we're doing is they got this income need of 35,000 a year. We're not drawing anything from their retirement. We took what we wanted to convert, okay? We spread it out, figured out the best rate to do that with. And then what do we do for income? Because we only have 900 a month coming in. We took out 33,500 from the reverse mortgage for eight years to build the social security bridge or the bridge until the husband's social security comes in. Well, then we have the husband retire. He claims Social Security, $26.40 a month. The wife switched to a spousal benefit of $1,000 a month, total Social Security income, $43,680 a year. So their provisional income at that point was $21,840. So that's the Magi, okay? No tax on Social Security, okay? And their provisional income, oh, it, it, it wouldn't exceed $32,000 until age 80 because of the QLACs. So we had completely tax-free income there for a while. And keep in mind, we got all the money sitting in a Roth. So anytime we take out 50 grand for a new car or whatever else, or take a trip, all that money is tax-free. It does not affect taxes on Social Security. It does not affect Irma. And I keep mentioning Irma. That's where you start to pay more premiums on your Medicare. And it can get to be 
four times or more what the standard Medicare premium is, depending on how much you go over. So next slide. Okay, so if we look at this, um, so we're using a Roth conversion while optimizing Social Security using a reverse mortgage. So here, what we looked at is the QLAC income coming in. I, I did it staggered. So the way the QLACs work, you can do, I believe it's 25% of whatever's in traditional IRAs and there's a cap. They adjust it each year. It's somewhere around 130, 132,000 right now is the total that you can do, okay? So what I do is I like to layer it into a guaranteed increasing stream of income. Uh, one thing I would, would share on these things is, you know, a lot of people want to have the return of premium, the return, the, you know, the refunds, all that stuff. You can put that on there, but, you know, some people look at it, well, that's no good. It, it ends as soon as I do. Well, if we look at income is for income, and if you look at life expectancy, if you have increasing life expectancy, that means more than half your clients should probably live beyond life expectancy. And when you do it on a couple, the odds of them living past the life expectancy is usually pretty good. And the thing is, if you do no refunds and all that, they're gonna get a lot more money if they live beyond um, um, their life expectancy. Now, I'm not saying that's what they should do, but I tell clients, I, look, you know, we, we, we can either bet on you dying sooner rather than later or living longer. Now, if we're buying these things for a guaranteed long-term lifetime income, shouldn't we bet on the longevity side rather than the short-term side? And if we're worried about money not going to the kids, you know, solve that with life insurance. So this is just showing the, the income coming into different tiers. So when I talked about in the previous slide, how much money we were doing in QLACs, this is where that income is kicking in. And by using that reverse mortgage to bridge until Social Security came and then delaying this for a while, I allowed them to be in a tax-free income for a long time, not until age 80 before they started paying taxes. And it's only because I layered all this onto the QLACs. Now, another thing we could have done is maybe not do so much in QLACs because maybe the client isn't concerned about all this guaranteed increasing income and they'd rather keep the money invested and have it growing tax-free. There's nothing saying that you need to do this, but keep in mind, you can have, if all you have is social security income, somewhere around $1,000 a month is how much we can get tax-free, okay, based on the way the standard deductions are today. So with that, um, so here just kind of lays out what happens. And I just showed a Roth IRA balance growing at 7%. Does that mean that's what they're going to earn? No. But I like to be conservative. And if we have money that we don't need, I believe if you don't need money for 10 years or more, you can afford to be investing for growth. Okay. Now, if you look at the stock market, it's averaged around 10% since the beginning of time. Investment real estate has been about the same. Well, those aren't even fair numbers because you have fees associated with that. Now we don't have taxes because remember we're in a tax-free environment. So if, if I look at that, you know, 9%, and if we look at advisory fees and all that, that's 8%. So I think I'm being conservative at 7%, but you can pick and choose any number that you want. So when I look at this, I look at what is the amount of income that they're getting, gross income. So during the conversion years, because I'm using the reverse mortgage, um, you know, we're able to get, you know, um, we're, we're doing all these conversions, which is triggering the 8880 of taxes each year. Um, their net income, 35,420, uh, year-end mortgage balance, 60,402. And then we look at what the Roth balance is. And as we do all the conversions, the total income that, came, that, that we had to pay taxes on by doing the conversions, 788,982, what is the total taxes paid? 12,402, the effective tax rate on this is 1.6% um, during those first several years and the effective rate of their taxes after that, once the QLACs are kicking in and their income's going higher and higher, they're at an effective rate of 16.6%. So their effective rate during the early years, 1.6%, 
And then in the later years, as their income continues to grow, 16.6%. And look at how that, uh, that Roth IRA grows. So we have all the growth happening in a tax-free bucket, whereas that year-end mortgage balance had gone, you know, by taking all that money out, you know, with principal and interest grew to 906880 and that was based on the interest rates at the time we did this. Um, so it's going to vary maybe a little bit. But keep in mind, our equity in the house if we start with equity in the house, and let's just say we have 200,000 of equity in the house, I really truly believe if we have a normal market, we're gonna to continue to grow the equity in the house, just not as fast. But what is the equity growing in the house? You know, I look at personal residence, it's not an investment. It is a quality of life, it's a place to live. So we shouldn't look at it as some family heirloom because the kids are not moving into the house. They're gonna cash it out. So where are we going to get the most money? And if you look at a Roth IRA, if we give them the house and the kids sell it, what do they do with that money? Okay. If they don't spend it, they got to invest it. And let's just say the kids each inherit $100,000 from house proceeds. Can I put that somewhere where it's tax-free and has the potential to grow at 8 or 9%? No. Okay. It's going to be taxable wherever I invest it. The Roth IRA, we got 10 more years of tax-free investing ahead of us if we play our cards right. So there's a lot of different ways we use this and, and you can do planning to get them to tax-free retirement, but also most of the clients that I work with, you know, pensions are a thing of the past. So most of a client's net worth is tied into two places, their house and their retirement accounts, the retirement accounts. If you don't look at, as, at them as in silos, and you look at the big picture, I don't care how you run the numbers, unless absolute worst case scenario happens and everything goes completely off the rails, yeah, you might have been better off with that from an asset standpoint. But it'll be hard pressed for anybody to show me that incorporating a reverse mortgage into your retirement income plan, I don't see any way where you would be better off from an income standpoint not having a reverse mortgage. And when I look at it from an asset standpoint, I believe you have um, probably somewhere around a 90 to 95% chance if you live to life expectancy that your balance sheet will be better with a reverse mortgage than without. And the last thing that I'll mention to people is this, when's the right time to do the reverse mortgage? As soon as you or your spouse turn 62. Now for me, um, you know, Harlan talked about he's and this is something you should be talking to, even with younger clients. Um, one of the things I set up with them when we first get together, <clears throat> I give them Harlan's book. Okay. And that's the book I give if they're just your average everyday couple. If you're working with an engineer, I'll give them Wade Fowles book, or maybe one of the other books that goes through all the technicalities that, that engineers like to read. But I'll tell them, I said, look, we're gonna be doing this retirement planning. One of the best tools in the toolbox is reverse mortgages. And there's more misunderstanding about a reverse mortgage than just about anything else I know. And most of the misunderstandings are 180 degrees off from what, what they really can do as a tool. So what I'll do is I'll tell them, okay, you need to get in, um, you need to read this book, and then we're going to discuss it, and we're going to determine whether or not your retirement plan will be with or without a reverse mortgage. And, and again, keep in mind, you know, what do we all sell? We all sell life insurance. If they're worried about how much they want to give to a kid, okay, we can solve that with life insurance with complete certainty. You know, if they, if they want to leave $250,000 to kids, if I buy a $250,000 policy and I put the right premiums in, they're going to get two fifty. dollars If I've got a house that's worth $250,000, are my kids going to get $250,000? Who knows? If I die in 2009, they're probably not getting as much as if I died in 2007. So the thing is, you have to look at these things, not in a silo, in a big picture, because there's so many other things a reverse mortgage can do. And one last thing I'll talk about with the IRAs. How many of you know what the 
amount of equity in a house is protected from creditors' claims. How much is protected if someone goes to a nursing home and retirement accounts in a house? It varies by state. In my state, IRAs are 100% protected for the community spouse, the one that's living at home, if they go to a nursing home, if, if the other spouse goes to a nursing home. In Florida, both retirement accounts, the last time I checked, are protected. Okay, House has somewhat limited protection. And here in Wisconsin, we got a uh, 125,000 protected. So what's better? Have more money in an IRA that's 100% protected potentially, or have 125,000 in equity in the house. So um, I can go on and on, Harlan, but I, 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 I think I, I gave a compelling case to at least consider it. And uh, if you're not sure what you're doing, I mean, Harlan, one of the reasons I, I work closely with Harlan is I got clients all over the country and Harlan has reverse mortgage specialists all over the country. And I know if I've got a client in Colorado, I can introduce them to someone in Colorado and I know they're gonna do a good job because one thing I know about the culture at Fairway, um, they're, almost, um, they're almost like evangelists for reverse mortgages. They believe they're out there to help people um, and they take time with people and part of the regulations you know, they have to, clients have to go through a whole process to make sure that they, they really understand the reverse mortgages. And, and I will tell you, Harlan has a group of counselors. He doesn't have any salespeople on his team. And uh, they're just great people to partner with, especially if you have clients across state lines. Um, one other thing is, you know, a lot of us will have clients in retirement want, might want to relocate. And one of the other great tools with these reverse mortgages is on a new home purchase. Um, I just had somebody who I thought would know better. He's one of the smartest guys I know in the business. And he's in the process. He's talking about looking for a house. And he said, yeah, I'm going to go pay cash for it. And then maybe I'll get a reverse mortgage so I can access the equity. I said, why would you go through all that? Why not just put a little bit of cash in and be done? He goes, what, you can do that? I said, absolutely you can. And I was shocked he didn't know that. So at any rate, um, take advantage of it. Get educated on it. It's uh, To me, it's, uh, like I said earlier, Swiss Army knife of, of uh, retirement plans because there's so many different ways it can, it can be used. And we only scratch the surface today. Well, thanks for that, Jim. You, you, you have the ability to pack a whole bunch of stuff into a short period of time. And uh, usually um, uh, in a situation where you raise more questions than you answer because of all the stuff you go into. I mean, it's not just reverse mortgages, it's every, all of the, the working pieces together. A couple of questions that came up and a couple of comments. Jim started out with a compliance issue. Notice that we never talk about borrowing money to invest. That's not the purpose of a reverse mortgage. We're not pulling money out so we can invest it in Bitcoin or you know, whatever the latest hot stock is or whatever. This is about cash flow. And this is about tax-free cash flow that you start when you're 62. So if you have any issues with your compliance officers, uh, we have worked with a lot of the compliance officers, Dr. Wade Fow, Dr. Uh, uh, Barry Sachs, who worked with FINRA. Um, uh, we can help you with that process. I was just at a, a speaking event in, in Orlando uh, on Wednesday, and one of the uh, uh, people there has his own reverse mortgage, recommends it to his client, hands out our books, and he had a problem with his compliance officer. He wrote all of the information that we gave him. Um, offered to pay for uh, Wade Fow to talk to his, his compliance officers, it went away and there wasn't any other questions. So once they understand that this is part of an overall plan, it makes it easier. So if you have any questions on that specifically, don't hesitate to contact us. We'll put you in touch with the people that can help you with that. The other thing that I want you to realize is everybody worries about how much equity they lose. When you saw Jim's slide, yeah, you lost 900,000 in equity, but you had three point whatever million in your right pocket uh, with the Roth IRA that can transfer to your kids tax-free. Uh, so it, it needs to be understood that your kid, this is not something that's going to hurt your kids. My kids are excited. We have four of them, four sons, and they're excited that we're doing a reverse mortgage because they know that they're going to get more in the bucket too with life insurance and our other investments that we have, and they're going to get less in the house because which kid is going to move in? None of the four are going to move in. They all have their own houses. And besides that, when I die, I'm maybe 90, the kids are 60. 
my goodness, they probably are not, certainly not going to want to move in at that point, but project that into the future. Um, so the issue is, is that we need to think about what, what is the goal overall. Now, somebody asked, what about the cost of a reverse mortgage? Um, I work with a financial advisor in North Carolina, and he says, uh, these, th this, this sounds too good to be true. You can pull out money. You don't have to pay it back until a year after your debt. I mean, realistically, we should have people lining up at our door, um, uh, taking a number like Baskin Robbins, saying, I want some of that cheap 4% money or 3.5% money. Uh, I want some of that cheap money that I don't have to pay back until a year after I'm dead. I mean, that, that's the ultimate um, terms that you can get. Uh, but he said, it's not too good to be true. It's too good to be free. There's a cost of 2% that goes to Federal Housing Administration, which is kind of like buying a put in the future value of the house. Because you saw my initial example that that 300,000 would have went to 750,000. Well, if your house isn't worth 750,000, the difference is forgiven. If it's over uh, 750,000, the kids get the difference. So if it's good, the money goes to the children. If it's bad, the bill goes to FHA. So it's just like any other mortgage, except you have to pay 2% of the value of your house. So if you get a $500,000 house, that's $10,000. That seems like a lot of money, but what's the alternative? Not being able to do a Roth conversion, paying more IRMA, paying more in a higher tax bracket, paying a lot more taxes. So would you rather pay us $10,000 or would you want to instead um, uh, of paying us, uh, or instead of paying us 10,000, pay an extra 50,000 in taxes? Uh, you, you, it, it costs money no matter where you get the money. It's Arlen, you get it the cheapest. Yes, Jim. Arlen, I was just going to say, I just met with a client last night and we were kind of going over this. And this gal, she's um, uh, she was making pretty good money and she's a travel agent, right? And, and she wanted to work till she was 70 and she's like 65 now. And now she wants to retire today because now she's not a travel agent. Now she's a refund agent, a uh, investigating, uh, you know, where the money went for the person's deposit on the trip this year, that year, where it used to be the only time she talked to her clients is after they got back from a trip, thanking her for a wonderful trip. Now she's managing all these fires. But anyway, uh, I talked to them about a reverse mortgage and I said, you know, retirement's all about priorities. And she's like, well, I don't know if I like that reverse mortgage. And then the husband asked, well, how much is it? And I told him, I said, hey, right up front, you know, you're probably looking at total fees of maybe 20 grand. Oh, that's a lot of money. And I said, well, you're going to be saving $1,000 a month. I said, so it's 20 months and you make up those fees. But the good news is you're not even going to pay it. It's going to come right out of the equity of your house. So the growth in the equity of your house that could potentially happen will cover those fees eventually. Um, but it's going to come out of the equity. But um, but if I look at it, it's not going to the break even isn't just the thousand a month times 20. No, they would have had to take 1300 a month out to net the tax to pay the mortgage. You know, and I start doing the math for them. And it's like in retirement, it's not about the balance sheet. It's all about cash flow. And 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 if I'm a betting guy, again, if they're going to live the life expectancy, you know, we're going to have more assets if they follow the income plan. Now, if they decide to take that extra cash flow and live a little better, well, they got a return on their investment. It's called quality of life, you know, and um, it is really something I've had it where there's so many people I like to see, you know, for a ratio for clients, 50% dedicated to growth, and that's their inflation hedge and 50% dedicated to income. And I got a lot of people that are because of COVID and stuff like that, they want to retire and they got 80, 90% of their money needing to be dedicated toward income and looking at maybe having to work five, six, seven years to, I put a reverse mortgage into the equation. And now we're looking at maybe we can retire in a year or two, or maybe even right now by incorporating that in the plan and me feeling safe that they don't have to lose sleep worrying about running out of money. That's exactly right. And, and realize I'm doing the same thing. On April, when I close my reverse mortgage, my closing costs are $31,000. Do I care? No, because I'm freeing up $3,500 a month. If I send Jim $3,500 a month, can he do better for me than if I continue to try to pay off a 3% loan? 
I, I would hope that all of you would be able to do that. So think about that. I, I don't care about the 31,000. I'm, I'm losing 31,000 in my left pocket. I'm gaining $100,000 in tax savings in my right pocket. I don't care one, about getting 31,000. And one other point I'd make about the cost, because I see some of the stuff flashing on the screen, and that does give people sticker shock every time they hear about it. But what I would suggest to everybody is this. Okay, number one is, everything is transparent. Everything is disclosed with a reverse mortgage. That ain't true of the traditional mortgages. And I don't know how many of you understand how a real mortgage works and how everybody gets paid. But on average, I would say a traditional mortgage, the mortgage broker makes twice what the regulated fee is for a reverse mortgage. In addition to that, you've got this 2% guaranteed mortgage insurance cost. Now I'll tell you, that's the best bargain of the day because that protects you on the downside risk of falling real estate prices, which is even more important the bigger the house gets. Because once you get to the more expensive house, you've got a limited market, much more affected by interest rates and downturns in the economy than the family starter home is. So you've got that cost built in. And when you look at it over the life of a contract or a life of a reverse mortgage, the, the, the costs are definitely reasonable. But what you get in return in tax savings, cash flow, less taxes on Social Security, all these different things, if you put the ducks in a row properly, you will make back those fees many, 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 many times over. So do not judge the fees on the surface. You got to look at the overall plan and what am I giving up in those fees? But what am I gaining on the, on, on the other side? Because um, I, I see a lot of us in our field, and I was one of them. Uh, and I looked at reverse mortgages, heard the bad news, said, ah, I'm never going to look at it. Um, but it took a couple financial articles written by people I respected. And all of a sudden, I had an aha moment and decided, you know what? I really need to get in a little bit deeper with this stuff. Well, thanks for that, Jim. And, and a couple of questions here that I want to make sure that we get answered before our time is up at the top of the hour. If anyone talks wants to talk to any of our loan officers, I do not do loans personally. I'm uh, no longer licensed. I've done thousands of them over the years. But uh, we have people, as Jim mentioned, in every state in the U.S., and we can help you from that standpoint. Just let us know reverse events at fairwaymc.com. Um, uh, we uh, definitely have more webinars coming up. Uh, watch your NAFA information. And if you want to have the uh, details, just uh, send it over to us at uh, and we'll uh, send you uh, the information as we have webinars. Um, uh, and if you want a copy of this recording, just uh, simply let us know and we'll get that out to you. Um, the uh, uh, question of what happens if you plan to sell your house, this is like any other mortgage. You sell your house, you pay us the difference, and you move on to the next one. I, I've got some people that are on their fourth reverse mortgage uh, because they moved. Um, and uh, Lisa asked, what does someone do with the lump sum since they may or may not owe that much taxes in one year? We set it up as a line of credit. You only pull out the money you need. So we might set up a $300,000 line of credit. You don't have, you only have to pay $50,000 a year in taxes over the period of the next six years or something. But that You only pull the money out as you need it. You, we don't give you $300,000. You don't have to invest that $300,000. It sits in a guaranteed line of credit. You say, well, why don't you just use a regular line of credit? Because that can go away and it's not guaranteed to grow and it isn't guaranteed not to have payments. So um, excellent question, Lisa. Uh, you're not converting all of the money at one time. That's, that's not the way that it works. And of course, you can sell your house whenever you want. Uh, Jim, one of the questions that was asked is, uh, if you have any software specifically, by the way, we have software, as Jim mentioned earlier, it's called Equity Tracks, part of the Money Tracks software program. Um, uh, but I will tell you this if you take a look at uh, whatever you're using, eMoney, Money Guide Pro, whatever, uh, Living Balance Sheet, just put the information in and, if the inf and, and we'll give you a schedule of how much we're going to charge on the negative amortizing interest and what your balance will be five years, 10 years, 20 years from now, and then put your other numbers into the asset side and see what you have in your left pocket as compared to what you have in your right pocket, and you'll be better off. But is there any software that you specifically use, Jim? That was one of the questions. Well, for, for tax calculation, stuff like that, we do have software, but it's I'm, I'm, I have an accounting firm. But think about this. If you go, you know, where, where's your chance for getting referrals? You know, have them talk to their accountants, okay? Because most accountants have this mindset, we're gonna kick the can down the road 
and have an assumption, we'll pay it later, we'll figure it out when, but not now, we'll try to get this year's taxes as low as possible. You want to talk to their professional, and then when you talk to their professional, you have them do the calculations, because sometimes they'll have an aha moment, because I've got some clients where we're blowing all the way up to the top of the 24% bracket, and it seems counterintuitive versus paying 22 along the way because of those bonus taxes we talked about with IRMA and Social Security tax. And then you'd say to them, do you have other clients that we can maybe help plan for to get them in this position? It's a great referral source. So take advantage of the other professionals and, and prepare your clients. It's only fair for them to pay for that. Accountants are looking sometimes for revenue streams outside of tax season. And this is a great thing. Charge 150, 200 bucks, do a Roth analysis, uh, you know, conversion analysis, and, and that, that can work. But um, Harlan's got some great stuff. And, and we've got income planning software that we actually made internally. Um, but, but all those things together uh, can, can really come up with some great results for your clients. And we're almost right at the top of the hour. Uh, we could, quite frankly, with Jim's wisdom on this stuff, we could go on for another hour or two. He mentioned it's a Swiss Army knife. We honed in on one specific thing, doing Roth conversions with reverse mortgages, which affects Social Security, which affects IRMA, which affects all kinds of things, affects cash flow, affects longevity issues. Uh, so bottom line is, is there's, there's more to this. 90% of your clients will be better off. Why would somebody of Jim's stature with his knowledge plan on doing a reverse mortgage the first day that he can? Because he knows what the advantages are that he's even doing for himself and recommending it to all of his clients. If you want a um, free copy of my book uh, and that you want to also give to clients, we will give it to you. Uh, we're not interested in selling books. We are interested in uh, making sure that we change lives with reverse mortgages. So simply reach out uh, uh, to our reverse events at fairwaymc.com and say, hey, I want one of those books. Um, I want to talk to somebody in your area, uh, whatever the situation is, and we will be thrilled to be able to uh, help you from there. Uh, that's that's what, we're, um, uh, what we're here for because you, the, most of your clients would be better off. But don't talk to your clients about it. Um, uh, just make sure that first you understand what it's going to do for them, because uh, you need to do the numbers like what Jim did to be able to see what those advantages are. Um, and as uh, the NAFA membership just mentioned, the recording is for those of you that are on here, uh, the recording is uh, going to go out on Monday. So uh, um, that's something that NAFA is going to be taking care of for you. And we'll get that out. And of course, going to reverse events, several of you typed in uh, the request. Um, uh, just make sure that that you let us know uh, and we'll get that out to you. Uh, you know, when I, and I want to thank Jim because uh, there's some things that he's done for me as well. Personally, um, uh, I've talked to a lot of advisors around the country and you know as well as I do, there's a lot of them that don't know what they're talking about. Uh, uh, Jim does. He's been doing it himself. He's done the research and um, pay attention to people that have done the work and are actually using it in practice uh, on, a, on a daily basis. Uh, Jim, uh, thank you. Uh, we really appreciate your time this afternoon on a Friday afternoon. And thanks to all of you that listen. There's a bunch of people that get invited to things like this that don't show up because they think they know everything. And uh, you know that you learned a few new things. And uh, Jim, thanks for sharing your wisdom with uh, NAFA, uh, the NAFA family and with us. We really appreciate it. Hey, it was my pleasure. And just as a reminder to everybody, we do Power Session Live where we share strategies like this every month. Carlin's been on. Um, so you want to learn more about strategies. Uh, it's a NAFA member benefit that you can take advantage of. We just had one today. We do it the second Friday of every month. So check that out if you want to get more ideas. Thanks again. Uh, and thank you, Nathan, for the hosting. And uh, we'll look forward to visiting with every one of you. Have a, a great rest of the Friday and a great weekend. Thank you.